Hey there, first readers. I'm the Reverend Dr. Rachel Wren, and I am bringing you the next in our series of episodes that we are calling Summer Shorts. Now, no, this is not a series of first reading monogram capris, trousers, or shorts, though if you'd be interested in that, send us an email at firstreadingpodcast at gmail.com because I think I know somebody who might be able to make that happen. Summer Shorts are just little mini episodes that we are filming and placing on our YouTube channel. Uh, they're just a few minutes long to give you kind of one main insight into the biblical text and uh, one or two ways really to preach it. If you are listening to this on our podcast, you might want to hop on over to our YouTube channel and check it out there. You can find it either on YouTube or at firstreadingpodcast.com. The first reading for June 30th is actually 2 Samuel, but you are hearing from a psalm scholar today, so we're going to sit in the psalm. This is Psalm 130, and it is a gorgeous, succinct little poem that is one of my favorites. One of the things that I want to lift up today is the way this psalm deals with the concept of hope. It's really a psalm of hope, a psalm of healing. And when you've got something like hope, it's important to name the fact that, first of all, hope is coming from a low place. It says it right away in the psalm. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Now, if you are in the depths... The implication is that you are really, really hoping God is going to hear you. That word depths in Hebrew only shows up a couple of times in scripture. And each time it's usually used to talk about a deep, watery place. You know, for those of us 80s and 90s babies like me, you might remember uh, a show called Lassie. And kind of the catch phrase or the catch line from Lassie was, uh, what's that Lassie? Little Timmy has fallen down a well. Now, if you are a Gen Z -er or younger than me, I apologize. It's not going to make any sense to you. But if you do come from my era, um, you know that what's going on there is something bad has happened. Somebody is in a dangerous situation and they need to be rescued. It's not that different from this psalm, except that instead of talking about little Timmy being down the well, the psalmist is talking about themselves being down the well. If you are in a depth place and that depth place is filled with water, then what that means is that you don't have unlimited time. If you can just sit there long enough and shout loud enough and someone can come and find you, that's great. But if you're treading water at the same time, your body's eventually going to get tired and you can't exactly take just a little nap to rejuvenate and keep on shouting. So first of all, out of the depths means that this is a dangerous place. This would have been a familiar concept in ancient Near Eastern times. Low places were inherently dangerous. You had creek beds and river beds that would go dry in the dry winter months. And then you had torrential, you still do have, torrential rains in the spring, which would fill up those low places with water in a flash. If you're in one of those depths and you're taken by surprise when the torrential rains come, it's not going to go well for you. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Other low places that were dangerous were if you were in a battle and you were in a valley. If your enemy has the higher ground than you, it doesn't matter if there's water in your area or not, you are inherently at a very dangerous disadvantage. So in a battle, out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Another place that was the depths was a prison. Um, prisons in our time are not what they quite would have been like in ancient times. In ancient times, most often, the way to keep someone contained if they were a dangerous criminal or were accused of something dangerous was just to dig a real deep hole in the ground and toss them in it. You can always pull them back up if you want them, or you can just leave them there and the problem will kind of solve itself. Out of the depths, I cry to, O oh Lord. Now, if you're on the banks of one of those deep, deep holes or prisons or creek beds looking in, you don't need to have hope. Hope necessarily comes from a place where you are not certain yet of the ending. You are not yet certain of the ending. We see the New Testament author, authors pick up on this idea too. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith and hope are tied together. Hope doesn't necessarily have to feel bad. 
out of the depths, I mean, the, the depths I talked about were kind of bad, but it doesn't have to feel bad. But it is a place where there is still a lack of resolution. Things are as yet unresolved. Because of that, it's also interesting to think about um, hope, the way hope is presented in Psalm 130, as a thin place. Now, when I say a thin place, I mean a place where two worlds are touching or have the potential to touch or are in some way overlapping together. The image that shows up in this psalm is of the watchman waiting for the morning. And you notice that line, if you've been listening long enough, you know what I'm going to say here. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. Okay, so why am I extending the word soul? Well, because like I said, if you've been watching for long or know me well, you know that that word soul is not psyche, like it's in Greek, with this concept of something insubstantial connected to our bodies. No, this is nephesh. And your nephesh is right here. It is your craning neck. It is your watching throat. It is the thing that is holding its breath and gasping and waiting for that thing to occur, whatever it is. In a thin place, you stand with your neck craned. You stand with your nephesh extended. Your nephesh is the thing without which you cannot live, but it is the thing upon which your life depends as well. My soul waits. No, no. My nephesh waits. I am craning and I am looking in that thin, thin place, waiting for just a glimmer of God's hope and love and light and salvation. Last thing I want to say that this psalm lifts up is that hope comes from an embodied place. Like I already talked about nephesh, your body is waiting. Like when you are hoping for something, really hoping, your heart might be fluttering, your breath might be coming in kind of shallow little gulps. You are waiting and your whole body is waiting, not just your soul. The other thing that's involved too is your emotions. I heard recently this beautiful quote that hope comes from a place that is equally of anxiety and joy. And it's so true. So in this space, dear preachers, what are the things for which your congregants hope? What are the things that they are waiting with every breath of their body? What are the things that are so filled with both joy and anxiety that it is keeping them on the edge of their seats more than the watchman who waits for the morning? Sit with this text this week. Read it over and over again. Read your local newspaper. Where is the hope and what is the gospel, the good news, the blessing that this text might have to offer to your people? That's all we've got for this week. Hopefully there's something sermon worthy in here or at least thought provoking. I pray for God's blessings upon your sermons and we will see you next time. Dear preachers, happy preaching.